Hello and welcome. My name is Natalie Ariola, and today we will be exploring the work of Mexican photographer Graciela Iturbide. Iturbide's work is mystical and otherworldly. It transports you to a place of dreams, where hidden realities seem to reveal themselves before her lens. Yet her work is not overtly fantastical or surreal. Her images are always grounded somewhere within tangible reality. She has spent a great deal of her time photographing peoples of Mexico, and one of her most well-known images comes from a series she made on the people of Juchitan. Still, her work evokes a sense of something enigmatic and sublime. Whether she is exploring the cultures and traditions of the natives of Mexico or her personal struggles through self-portrait, her images are rooted in the everyday and the ordinary while simultaneously transcending it. This play between the seen and unseen is what gives her work its magic. In one of the many interviews she has been so gracious to allow, she says, We only come to earth to dream, to be with the flowers, and then someday we go to the other side. Iturbide's work is rich, lyrical, and symbolic. Her images never shy away from death, decay, or ugliness. Even when she is photographing peoples and cultural rights, her approach is that of the poet, who attempts to remind us that everything in this world holds some fascination. So how does she create images which are straightforward and simple, yet also feel revelatory and transcendent? This is the question I will attempt to answer in today's episode of Natalie Ariola is Murdering the Classics. There is a deeply intuitive aspect to Iturbide's work that relies on her ability to tap into the subconscious and allow her photographic choices to happen naturally and without force of will. This is not to say that her images are accidents, but rather that she allows herself room to be playful and to expect the unexpected. She has said of her process, I take my camera and walk, and when something surprises me, that's when I photograph. It's the subconscious that's acting with all the influences I carry with me, like painting, music, literature, and other photographers. And the subconscious plays heavily into Iturbide's work. Whether it is the subconscious as revealed through dreams, or her unique ability to capture those uncanny moments of surprise, her images feel like an enchanted mirror in which the ordinary world regains its mystique. In Iturbide's images, dreams, visions, and the other side, as she calls it, intertwine with day-to-day -day life as naturally and unassumingly as a stream weaving its way down a mountainside. For my take on Iturbide's work, I will be making a self-portrait Iturbide has intermittently made self-portraits throughout her career. Of her self-portraiture process, she said, In general, when I make self-portraits, it's because they come from my imagination. And I do them quickly, but they're instinctive, instantaneous. Here we are again confronted with the connection of her work to the subconscious mind. Yet as with all her work, her self-portraits are not flashy or forced. They feel completely natural, and the strange elements present seem as though they belong perfectly. Iturbide made one self-portrait she calls Ojos para volar, or Eyes for Flying, in which she holds two birds in front of her eyes. The idea of Eyes for Flying, or in another translation, Eyes to Fly With, will be the inspiration for my self-portrait. I will take a cue from Iturbide's naturalistic approach to her work, and create an image that is simple and expressive, while also crossing the barrier between the everyday and the uncanny. 
We are now set up and ready to do our shoot. So I have my friend Zora here currently standing in for me. I will be sitting on this stool and I'm using her as an aid in getting my framing for this shot. So I've already set my camera up over there and I have my trigger on it and I've got my exposure and I need to have some idea of what the framing of my shot is going to be, seeing as this is a self-portrait. So that is where she comes in handy. So I've already done that. I've got my framing set up and I took a couple of test shots to make sure that that is going to work out and we're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and move her out of here now. So let me talk to you about the lighting. I have my main light over on this side. This is my Photodiox dish light and I've been very much enjoying using this light recently. It's sort of a similar quality to a beauty dish. And then over on the other side, I have a fill light. So that's kind of pushed back into the corner and I have it at about half power. So I want some nice dense shadows, but I also want my figure to kind of pop off the background a little bit. Now, one thing that you may notice is that I am wearing a black shirt and I'm going to be shooting myself against a black background. So that is intentional. I want to have my body sort of blend into the background so that the focus is really on my my hands and my face and my hair so sort of this lighter part of the frame so i think that will just make for a lot of contrast and a very interesting and dramatic image and uh, let's talk about the actual idea for the image so i do want to get that somewhat naturalistic sense of something just a little uncanny that you see in iturbide's work so as I said, I am using her image Ojos para volar or Eyes to Fly With as my inspiration. And what I'm going to be doing is just using my hands to create a wing-like shape that I'll be holding over my eyes. And that is going to be my personal take on that idea. And that's really it. So it's just a very, very simple image. And uh, like I said, I've already got everything set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a seat and get a few shots here. So uh, I did have to set my camera to a delay in order to give myself a chance to focus. And then I'm gonna set my trigger down and go ahead and do my pose. So we'll start by just focusing on the hand there. And we'll just get a few different ones. Basically, I'm just gonna kind of move around a little bit to give myself some options. So we'll just do like a couple more here, probably. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. And the interesting thing about self-portraiture is that you really don't know what you're going to get until you look at the back of the camera. But these are actually looking really, really cool. And I think we definitely got a little bit of that sense of the uncanny and we are ready to move on. I'm very pleased with the results of this shoot and can't wait to take a closer look at these images. But before I take them into Photoshop, let's talk a little bit more about what gives Iturbide's work its sense of mystery. And specifically, what creates that feeling of the enigmatic in an image? Iturbide does not like to be called surrealist, and she hates it even more when people label her work magical realism. And while I can relate to her distaste for the term magic realism, 
I do think that her work is very much surreal. Whether it is surreal because she follows the principles and aesthetic ideals of the formal surrealist movement is beside the point. Her images evoke a sense of the uncanny and rely heavily on influence from dreams and the subconscious mind. And this is the essence of surrealism. For me, the enigmatic in Iturbide's work arises from her ability to capture the uncanny in the everyday. Possibly her most famous image, Our Lady of the Iguanas, is an example of her sense of humor. While her photograph, Cemetery, Huchitan, Oaxaca, Mexico, reveals her fixation with death, her work is mysterious because it both reveals and conceals something about its subject matter. All photographs do this, but most don't know they're doing it. Iturbide knows what she's doing. She understands that her camera is a tool of revelation and obfuscation, and she uses this juxtaposition to great effect. I'm very pleased with my Iturbide-inspired image. It incorporates Iturbide's naturalistic eye by sticking with simple posing to evoke the uncanny, while also pushing a little further into the surrealistic space with the addition of silhouetted birds covering the subject's face and hands. Finding beauty, mystery, and awe in the mundane is more than just a photographic practice. It is a way of life. Iturbide shows this to us with her carefully composed yet spontaneous approach to what some might mistake for documentary photography. Iturbide took the time to get to know her subjects. She spent time living in Huchitan among the very people she was photographing. She did not take the approach of the outsider or the anthropologist. She wanted to understand the people she was photographing and to learn what their way of life can teach us about ourselves and our shared humanity. This is what the poet does. She finds the common threads that bind us and reflects them back to us through a distorted mirror. The distortion is what provokes thought and feeling. If we see nothing more than what we see every day, we will not be moved. It is through juxtaposition and the presence of the unexpected that we come to understand something deeper and more meaningful about the world and about ourselves. And it is through this renewed perspective on the commonplace that we regain our fascination with being alive. Thank you for joining me in this exploration and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on future episodes of Natalie Ariola is murdering the classics.